Um, I'm here today to talk as part of this Career Navigator um, series that you're running and um, the, the title for, for me today is Becoming a VR Ready Teacher in 18 Months uh, with an exclamation mark as well. Uh, <laughs> you, you'll see why as we get through. Um, so I, I decided I put my mugshot on, on, the front on the front screen because it will appear a little bit later on as well. So that's just to give you a bit of a warning. Um, so my name is Tim Jackson. Uh, I am a program director for higher education in computing. I work at Broadstairs College, um, which is part of the EKC group. And um, tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. Okay, so uh, the plan for the next 30 minutes, um, and please I will try and keep to the 30 minutes as much as I can. Um, so I'm going to start off with a bit of an introduction, who am I, a little bit about me, what I do, um, what makes me tick a little bit, um, what inspired me, and just as importantly, who inspired me. Uh, some of the main platforms that I've been using in VR, um, a little bit about my students and, and what's been happening with them. Um, some examples of challenges and successes um, that have taken place uh, and really what's going to happen next. I think that's really important because I want us to talk a little bit as we get towards the end about the job market. That is what this series of career navigator sessions are about and, and how we can relate this to employment. So um, I'm going to try and do a little bit of that as well. Um, I'm trying to look at the camera, but I'm also looking up at the screen because that's where you all are. So if I'm looking up, it's because I'm looking at your faces. So it's so, so nice to see all of you. And thank you all for, for being here today. If we can leave questions till right to the end, if that's OK. And I've also included a slide right at the very end of some resources that I think you'll find useful. Um, but the whole presentation is littered with resources. So there's hyperlinks all the way through. Um, and I've shared this presentation um, through uh, Google Slides already with the team so they can share them with you. Okay, wow, uh, busy slide. A little bit about me. Okay, so you know my name, Tim Jackson. I am an engineer by trade. I'm a network engineer. That's what I was trained to do at university. Um, a little bit about employment at this point, I guess. Um, I still teach networking. That's, that's one of the things I teach, but it's not the only thing I teach anymore. Um, and I teach a whole host of things, and I'll tell you about those in a little while. And I think one of the things I would say to you about the job market and um, the importance of picking up these new skills is that the fact that you need to diversify. So if I was still teaching what I was employed to teach 18 years ago, which is when I joined the college, it was December 2001, then I would probably only be teaching three, four units at the absolute most. Of, of the 12 units that I teach now. So the other eight units are, are things that I've picked up along the way, things that are exciting, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a little while. Um, okay, so uh, I'm an engineer by trade, I'm a program director. Basically what that means is that I run the undergraduate computing courses, that's my job. I work for the EKC group, but more specifically I work for Broadstairs College, uh, that's in the United Kingdom. I've put my contact details on there as well. Um, don't bother phoning at the moment. Nobody is there. Okay, <laughs> so just bear that in mind. But you are more than welcome to email me. Um, you've got the web address there for Broadstairs College. You've got my Twitter account and you've also got my LinkedIn account as well. So there's many, many ways you can contact me. You're more than welcome to reach out and say hi. Um, what, what's with all the, the flags and the cats? Well, um, okay, um, I love languages. Um, I'm nowhere near what Daniel does. Daniel can speak five different languages. I'm nowhere near that. I dabble. Um, I, I can just about manage English. Um, I can also speak, read um, a little bit of Greek, uh, hence the Cypriot and the Greek flags. Um, I've been to Cyprus and Greece many times. Um, and in addition to that, um, I am starting to learn Russian. Um, because I have good friends in Ukraine and I'd quite like to talk to them in their mother tongue as well. So that, that's what the flags are for. Uh, and it's a pleasure for me to try and, and learn another language. Um, and I love cats. I absolutely adore cats. So you can see the Obsidian uh, cat in the bottom left hand corner, beautiful cat. And in the top right, uh, top, sorry, bottom right corner, um, I, what I call my little blue eyed kitty and um, the sort of a Persian cat and most beautiful blue eyes and uh, absolutely adore cats. 
So uh, that's a little bit more about me. I'm not just about computing. I'm not just about VR. Um, I love fluffy things that speak in different languages. So there you go. Okay, so a little bit about what inspired me. Um, the reason I'm in education, the reason I, I, I came to education 18 years ago, um, I wanted to make a difference. That was all. People used to, used to say to me, Tim, with, with the knowledge and the understanding you have, why are you not working in industry? You could be working or earning four or five times the amount of money that you earn here. And I said, it's, it's not about money. It's about making a difference to people. It's about going out there and, and making a change to people's lives. And, and if I can do that with one person, you know, then it's made the whole 18 years worthwhile. Um, I'm glad to say it's not just been for one person. I've taught hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of students and they've all been amazing in their own way and they've all learned something um, and they've walked out of my classroom with a smile on their face uh, possibly because they were very keen to get out of the classroom or possibly because they've learned something I don't know um, I'd like to think it's because they've learned something so my desire is to actually make a difference um, that that's what I want to do uh, to the student's experience and this is where VR comes in um, the desire to make a change OK, and, and I think we've all got to remember that gone are the days of chalk and talk. OK, chalk and talk um, is gone. We need to engage. We need to captivate our audience. We need to, to make a difference to their lives. And using technology to do it will inspire them to want to go home and do it themselves. Um, and it's quite interesting what's been happening with my students. Um, Something else, though, there's also a, there's a plethora of, of really, really useful and engaging online material. And one of the areas that I teach is games design, and I use the Unity game engine. And I've got some resources at the end of the presentation that um, I'm sharing with you. There's fantastic resources straight from Unity. It's all free. Um, and there's some amazing things there that you can download and use. Um, one of the challenges is how we use that in VR, and I'll explain that a little bit as we go through. Um, and really weirdly, the, the coronavirus pandemic inspired me. How is that inspiration? Well, inspiration in as much that it forced the speed of change. Um, I was ready to, to do some lessons in VR. I was very happy to do maybe one lesson or two lessons every so often just to try it out and think, hey, this is, this is fun. Let's, let's give it a go. Um, and then lockdown came towards the end of March and it was suddenly, goodness me, we've got to do something and we've got to do it now. Um, and you'll see in a minute um, what, what happened. So coronavirus um, inspired me in as much as it forced me to do something that I wanted to do, but it forced me to do it quicker. Okay, and who? Who's inspired me? Well, um, Daniel, I've pinched your picture, my friend, and I've put it down in the bottom right corner. Uh, Daniel Dubosky Bryant, uh, amazing guy. He's co-founder of Educators in VR, uh, along with Laurel Van Fossen. Um, I'm going to quote something that you put on a post today, Daniel, about being kids together. Um, I've been working with Daniel since uh, January 2019, and, and we're just like a couple of big kids. The minute we get together, we start talking about VR. It, it's like Christmas for us, and we just start getting really excited about things. And um, we just sit and we brainstorm and we just throw crazy ideas around. And do you know what? Some of them are working. Some of them are working so well there's amazing things are coming. Uh, and Daniel, my friend, that's down to you. Uh, you inspired me, you motivated me, and you continue to do so every day. Uh, I'd like to thank you for that. And, and you're one of the main reasons why I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, two other people I want to mention in terms of resources. Uh, these two guys are, are doing amazing stuff with teaching in VR. So uh, Nicholas Baron, who runs computer science in VR group um, in Altspace VR, that you can see that's a link. So computer science in VR link um, will actually um, take you to that uh, and show you a little bit of the work that he's doing. Okay, so um, uh, please do go and have a look, follow him and drop in on some of his sessions because uh, there's some really, really interesting things he's doing uh, and he's running his own company as well doing that. Uh, and then Mark Souter, uh, who I met at the BET show, um, he's part of a Facebook group called the Unity Teach Community. Again, I've put a link there for you. Loads of Unity stuff on there. Crazy, crazy amount of stuff. Um, and, and he's using Unity an awful lot in his teaching. Uh, go and check it out, okay, because um, it's really, really good. Okay, so um, 
you know, please, please go and have a look. Can I just double check? You can all hear me all right, can't you? Yeah? Yeah, we hear you, hear you perfectly. Great, okay, because I, I know that not everyone can. Um, so I'm just getting a couple of messages come through. Sorry, one second. Um, right, so there's two people I want you to, to have a look at in terms of resources because um, th there's some really interesting things they're putting out there. So it's all about skill development. This is what I'm trying to do with my students and that's what using VR is all about. Uh, someone else I want to mention is Kurt Salter. He's inspiring me an awful lot. He's my college principal. Um, I want to say hello to him because um, he gives me access to budgets. And he's a really nice guy uh, and, and he believes in what I'm doing. He believes in, in, in he believes in this crazy dream I've got that, that we can, we can change the world with VR. Uh, and he's looking at me sometimes thinking, Tim, I know you're crazy, but I think you're actually, you've got something here. Um, and so I want to give a shout out to Kurt because uh, he's, he's really supported me. Um, we've built two VR specific labs at Broadstairs College. Um, one he knows about, and, and one he kind of knows about, um, but <laughs> he does, he does know about them, but amazing guy, shout out to him because he's supported me an awful lot. But you know, there, there are so many other people who are supporting me, they're motivating me, they're there with me every single day. They send me messages on Messenger and say, Tim, come on, you know, you can do this, you're working so hard. Um, there are so many people in my life who are very special and I want to thank every single one of them. And uh, Anita, without, without them, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. So um, thank you. Thank you. Um, so um, in terms of platforms, um, what are the main platforms that I use? Well, um, I'm going to, uh, sorry, I'm going to use a joke here. This stems from educators in VR, STEM, I'm sorry, science, technology, engineering, and maths. Um, I can't, I can't tell you how much educators in VR changed my life. Um, it, it really did. And as I said, I've been working with Daniel since January 2019. Um, I was dipping in, dipping out, doing all sorts of different things. Um, and then the very first fully online virtual reality conference came along. Uh, and that was the Educators in VR International Summit in February 2020. Notice the date. February 2020. We were less than one month away from lockdown. So I think it was like the 17th to the 22nd, uh, I think. Within a month, we were going to go into lockdown, um, which, which was the biggest shock to all of us. And yet we had laid the foundation with that conference. And the minute we went into lockdown, so many other people started looking at the work that we'd done. They were contacting Daniel and Laurel and going, oh my God, guys, what a Have you noticed how many VR conferences there are now? Have you seen how many online conferences? So the Facebook uh, conference got cancelled. GDC got cancelled. So many got cancelled and suddenly appeared online. Crazy. And, and you can do it so quickly. This is the amazing thing. And Daniel and his team were just ready to step up and help and say, hey, let, let's help you do this. Um, and just a point, actually, just to see, again, bringing in the employability, employability part. Um, HTC, I think we all know who HTC are in terms of a company. Um, they're known for the phones, they're known for the VR headsets. Um, well, uh, HTC have been working with the amazing guys on the Engage platform. That's the immersive VR education uh, company. And this guy there called Chris Madsen, um, amazing. The, the work that he does in the Engage platform is absolutely amazing. And um, they announced today, HTC, and Immersive VR Education have announced um, a, a package of investment that HTC are going to make um, to, to develop the Engage platform even more so than it is now, to make it even more effective than it is now for VR education. So one of the things I would say, uh, and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to use Engage as one of the platforms of choice, is because if you are looking to go into employment, if you're looking for VR to be your future employment employer, then you need to think about which platforms do I need to target? Which platforms are um, companies more likely to use? So look at what HTC are doing. Look at the investment they're putting in. They wouldn't do that if they didn't believe in it. Uh, and Engage is an amazing platform. And again, on the, on the screen, you can see I've put the URL for it. Um, 
And I've also put the URL for Altspace VR, which is the other platform I use. They're very, very different. Um, Engage has this really interesting feature where you can upload your real face. Uh, so you've got a realistic avatar. I did that. I had no hair and I took it off immediately. So <laughs> um, I, I'm now back to the standard dodgy looking avatar. Um, but try it. It's really cool. Uh, you, you should really give it a go. Um, so Engage and Altspace are two platforms that I think you ought to become acquainted with um, and, and build your skill set on. Um, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about um, what I think about VR as a tool in a few minutes. There are others. There are other platforms that you need to have a look at. Now, um, good friends of mine, uh, Alan Smithson and Julie Anderson Smithson, um, both based out in, in Canada, have uh, headed up a team where they've developed a, a document which is constantly being updated and it's called XR Collaboration. And there's the URL for it. Go and check it out, go and download it. There are so many uh, XR collaborators that are listed in that document of people that will work with you um, to develop you even further. So you need to get hold of that document. You need to bookmark it. You need to check it regularly. Um, and that will give you a lot of clues as to the platforms you should be using um, and also the people you should be communicating with. OK, so um, and I also use uh, LinkedIn for that. I'm on like twenty eight and a half thousand connections on LinkedIn. It's crazy. Um, but there are so many people on there who are going to support you in what you do. That, that was kind of like where I came across Daniel, actually. So we'll blame LinkedIn as well. Uh, oh, by the way, bottom right, <laughs> bottom right hand corner, I ought to mention that's a selfie of me in Altspace VR. OK, so that's me with um, they are my some of my level four students. OK, so that, that's just so you know. Uh, OK, so uh, my setup. So on the left, oh, by the way, this is pancake mode. Uh, I don't know if you know what pancake mode is, but pancake mode basically means it's 2D um, because you're looking at it in, in like a, a flat screen, like a pancake. So that's 2D mode. And I normally use 2D mode uh, simply because of the control. I can get a lot more control in, in pancake mode, in 2D mode, than I can in full immersive 3D VR. Having said that, I love being in 3D immersive VR um, in these environments. But if I'm trying to control and moderate and host and present, um, that's a lot of buttons to click. So I often, I'm in 2D. So the picture on the left, um, when I was last at work, so this was when I was um, involved in Educators in VR's International Summit. So uh, this would have been February 2020. This was my setup at work. Um, yeah, crazy. So three laptops, uh, an, an extra screen. So you can see at the back screen, I was, that's where I was running my VR environment. Uh, and then if you cut to the picture on the right, the picture on the right is my setup at home. Um, hmm. Spot the difference. Okay. I've grown an extra screen basically. Um, but that is where I'm sat now. That is exactly what I'm looking at right now. Um, that's the window I'm looking at out, at out at right now. So, and they're the headphones I'm wearing right now. So that is what I'm using right now. Uh, and it doesn't mean to say you have to have this set up for everybody. I'm just like crazy control and want to see everything at the same time. You could probably do it with a laptop and an extra screen. Okay, um, I'm just being a little bit over the top, typical me. Okay, um, right, a little bit, how did the students cope? Hmm, amazingly well, actually, amazingly well. The interesting thing what happened was that, um, I mean, attendance is normally pretty good. It's usually around about the, between 90 and 95% uh, attendance for classes. Um, but you always get an illness, don't you? Or you get like the bus is broken down or the trains aren't running, you know, the wrong type of snow or the wrong type of leaves or whatever. Um, so normally we sit between 90 and 95% attendance. The minute we went into VR, attendance jumped to nearly 100%. Okay, now attendance has maintained at nearly 100% for the entire time that we have been in VR. And just to kind of reinforce that, okay, since we've been in VR, we've had Easter or the April break, we've had um, two bank holidays, okay. If I was to tell you I had students in VR with me during the April break, during those bank holidays, 
Okay, they were with me learning, and you know, not a single one of them said anything. They didn't say, they, they didn't cause a complaint. They didn't say, oh, do we have to do this, Tim? They just turned up. They just did it. Okay, so it's, it's not just attendance is at 100%. Attendance to me is way above 100%. Um, um, they transitioned from RL or real life um, to VR, virtual reality, literally in one weekend. Um, we were, I remember we were in class on the Friday and we were talking about what are we going to do? How is this going to work? Um, and we were worried about it. I spent the whole weekend getting ready, setting up groups, setting up sessions, getting resources ready. Um, I don't remember sleeping that weekend, um, but I had to be ready for Monday. And the very first session, Monday morning, nine o'clock, I had 45 students sat in the engage platform, ready to engage with me, excuse the pun, ready to engage with me. Um, and we were good to go. And nine o'clock, everyone was there and we started. And it was amazing. It was a real challenge because I was doing everything by myself, everything. And I continue to do everything by myself. Um, I don't, that's not because I'm a control freak. It's because we're in isolation. Nobody else can be with me. Um, it, it's social distancing. No one can get within two meters of me. What am I going to do? So I end up doing it all myself. Having said that, I have called upon a couple of my colleagues from Educators in VR who have been amazing. So Donna has been fantastic. Um, she's an absolute whiz with alt space. So she helped me out an awful lot. Uh, Chris Madsen um, at Engage helped me an awful lot. Daniel helped me an awful lot. So I've not been on my own in that respect, but I have been on my own setting things up and getting going. Um, every session was recorded. Uh, and the reason we did this is because, the, well, the students wanted to see themselves in VR. They, they were intrigued. Um, they were able to go back over the session and say, well, actually, um, I was so excited about being there, I, I missed some of it. So they would pay, play the recording back and, and, and reflect on it and, and then tell me what they thought in the next session. Um, one of them actually said to me the other day, we were talking about, you know, um, the colleges are talking about going back slowly. Okay, so we're going back um, group by group by group. One of them actually said to me, do you know, Tim, he said, I'm going to miss being in VR. Couldn't believe it. Um, he said, I, I can't believe I'm saying that, he said, but I, I am going to miss being in here. He said, because I've really enjoyed it. It's been very secure for me. Um, and, and actually just to jump to the very last point, mental health. A lot of people were saying to me that their mental health was suffering badly, badly during, during the, the coronavirus pandemic that we, we're still in now. Um, but, um, you know, they, they, they really suffered. I had a lot of students suffering. Um, I was, I was talking to them a lot. Um, and often they would come into my, I, I used to have drop-in sessions as well, not just formal teaching sessions. I would have drop-in sessions so that they were able to um, talk to me, have that human contact, be able to say, you know, I just need to talk to somebody just, just to, on a one-to-one -one basis or, or in a group. Uh, and we did that. Um, and their mental health was incredibly important. And VR did that. We were able to maintain their level of, of a positive mental health attitude, uh, which was amazing. It was an amazing byproduct um, in addition to all the lessons and all the learning we were doing. <clears throat> um, so a little bit more about how they did. Well, still amazingly well. Um, we also used Discord. Um, now, Discord actually is a, is a, a gaming server um, and they use it an awful lot, surprisingly. So for familiarity reasons, um, we use Discord um, because we, we wanted to keep that familiar, fam, familiarity going. Um, and in fact, two of my HE students set it up for me. Never used Discord before. They said, Tim, don't worry about it. We'll do it for you. So I've now got a fully blown, fully structured Discord server for every level of student that I teach, for every unit that I teach. And I'm just dropping resources in there all the time. And they're loving it. And they're talking to me all the time. Um, and... Um, I'm also using the college system, which is called Moodle. And uh, Moodle is very, very good. Um, but the students, uh, because I'm engaging with them in, in Discord an awful lot, are going to Discord an awful lot as well, which is great. OK. Um, so I do, I, I, we do use Discord for a communication tool. So for example, I have one-to-one -one tutorials with them. Now, th this is what's really interesting. I will sit with them in engage or in alt space 
and there's a there's a, a, an awesome coffee shop environment in Engage, and we'll sit and I'll have a virtual coffee in front of me. In fact, I'll go and pour them a virtual coffee. Okay, we'll sit there at the table with a coffee each, and there'll be people around, and we will mute ourselves, jump into a voice channel, a secure voice channel on Discord, and and we will talk, and we will have a private conversation about how they're coping. Uh, and, and they've disclosed a lot of things to me, been very personal and, and allowed me to support them even more. So VR has this side to it uh, of being a very private mechanism um, that allows teachers to really engage with their students and get to a side of them that, that perhaps we've not been able to do before. Um, and it's been amazing. I also use um, Discord for putting out announcements. So um, oh, this little session we're doing now, I might have put on Discord for the students to, to come along. And it's very nice to see Ross here as well. So Ross, thank you for coming along. Not a student anymore, but I'm really, really happy that he's here. Um, now, interestingly, the students, we, we obviously we have our lessons. We have presentations that I do with them. Um, practicals are going to be a bit interesting, which, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but they are now hosting, presenting, and moderating in virtual reality. They've never done it before. And yet, uh, the second week we were in, I issued an exercise to them. I said, guys, okay, I would normally do this as a presentation, and I'm going to carry on doing it as a presentation. And they said, great, okay, let's do it. So we did. And the following week, they'd done some research, and there they were presenting in VR. Just like that. Amazing. Didn't bat an eyelid. The, the way that they've transitioned across is it, just fantastic. Um, and these are important skills for employability. Okay, the ability to, to get your point across, all those soft skills we talk about, communication, um, confidence, are just as important in VR as they are in real life. And I was asking students, well, was it easier to present in VR? And some of them said, well, actually, yes, it was because I couldn't see people. I was just looking at avatars. And it took away the fear factor. And so we could also use VR almost as a training mechanism to train people how to, how to give presentations. Uh, again, something else to think about when, when you're looking for developing your employability skills. And I think that the point you then need to think about is, well, once you start developing your VR skills in, in hosting and moderating and presenting, um, how do you monetize that? How can you then turn that into a way where an employer is going to look at you and say, do you know, we'd really like to employ you. We'd really like to have you working for us and, and sharing your skill set with us. Um, uh, Matthew, who's with us this afternoon, Matthew Byram, is, is, uh, he undersells himself. He's an amazing trainer. Um, and he works really hard at the college. And we were having a discussion the other day about how we can use virtual reality to train students and staff. Um, and he's using some of my skills and my experience that I've developed whilst working with educators in VR. Had I not have done that, Matthew could have come to me, I wouldn't have known what to say to him. And yet within the six month period, I've been able to tell him not just what VR is, I can tell him how it works, how it operates, how we can set up virtual environments, how we can train people, what headsets to get. And this is what I would say about employability skills. Um, you know, go out there, grab the technology, play with it, um, learn how it works, and, and then start using it, start promoting yourself. Uh, and that's how people will start to see you. Um, and I've actually got a student who's running a, a final year dissertation for his project that's going to analyze um, student feedback about how they felt about going into VR, both Engage and Altspace. And he's running that as a project for me. And he will give me feedback and tell me exactly what students felt um, about um, you know, how, how they felt about being in VR. So just very quickly, some examples of things I do in VR. Ferhan, how am I, how am I doing for, uh, for time? I think we have uh, five to 10 minutes. If it's oh, good. Okay. Yeah, we'll go 10 minutes then rather than five. <laughs> okay. I mean, uh, I also would like to open the stage for questions. Sure. That you Absolutely. Have. Uh, there, Absolutely. Uh, several questions, but go ahead. Definitely. Right. Okay. So just quickly, some examples of things that I do in VR. Uh, well, uh, basically in one weekend, I, I took all of my standard teaching that I used to do in a classroom and I just plonked it in VR. That's 21 hours of advanced computing teaching that I now run in purely in virtual reality. Uh, so that's A level. Um, so it's level three A-level students and undergraduate degree level. So that's uh, levels four and five, which are the first two years uh, of university. 
I know that um, there are university lecturers here today um, uh, who teach all the way up to level six, and I'm very, very keen uh, to work with them. There's a good friend of mine works in the Ukraine at the university, and I'm very keen to work with her to, um, to, to try and bring VR to them as well, because I think that's a, a real area that I, that I think will develop nicely. Um, so they're the levels of, te of teaching we're talking about, but the, we can roll this out at any single level that we want, any level. Um, I teach a range of topics, so data networks, security, robotics, game design and development, all in Unity. Um, and only one out of those four was I employed to teach right at the beginning of, of my career. The other three have come along afterwards. Uh, and now I'm teaching them in VR. Um, and here's the thing, this is where the challenge came because the theory side was really straightforward. We could do that, we could, um, uh, Daniel did an amazing session and engaged the other day with sticky notes. Oh my goodness, that gave me so many ideas, so many ideas, so I, I'm doing that now. Um, but the practical side is, is a challenge um, and finding online and virtual labs is a real challenge. Um, there's a guy I know called Jay who works at Immersive Labs, there's the URL there. Um, I've spoken to him on a few occasions and he wants to work with me um, as we come out of this pandemic and say, well, actually, how can we move forward? What are there things that we can do um, that's going to make this easier for you in VR? Difficult to do it at the moment, but not difficult uh, once we get past this, this current challenge. But it, it is finding things online um, it is difficult. So I've had to be very creative with the way that I um, develop VR labs. Um, and in fact, Daniel had an Educators in VR session on running VR labs not that long ago. Uh, and it's a real possibility. It's something that can really be done. Um, but it does take planning. It does take organization. Um, and it's a challenge really challenge. Um, one thing I would say, one example of thing I am doing in VR is I'm changing the face of education. Okay, we're all doing that. We're all changing the face of education. And you know what? Nobody was ready for it. Nobody was ready. Um, we, we jumped straight into VR and we're going, right, okay, what now? What do we do next? Uh, and we've not been making it up as we've been going along. We've been evolving as we've been going along. And therefore, those employability skills, those soft skills are so important because we've had to talk to each other and develop together as a team to work out, OK, how are we going to do this? And it's, it's been an amazing ride uh, and we're still riding. And we're now changing student expectations. Students are now coming in and expecting things from us in VR as if we're in a normal classroom. And, and that's great because it's a real challenge and the students are going, hey, well, can we do this? Can we do that? And I'm saying to them, I don't know. Let's try it. Let's work together. And, and we're actually collaborating students and lecturers together to try and develop VR resources even more so. Um, but there's lots of technical challenges that we have to adapt to very, very quickly. Um, technical problems, things that you can come across, people not being able to hear things, people not being able to see things. You've got to know how to deal with those on the fly. So you've got to be able to have people, you know, jump in, jump out, come in, come out. Has it worked? Um, be quite adept at using the messaging systems so um, you can talk to individual people if they've got a problem. OK, um, I have put some resources at the end that give you some examples of things that I've been doing. OK, and I've put some videos there of some of my sessions so you can see some of them. Um, hopefully you'll find them interesting. OK, and again, bottom right hand corner, there's another selfie. Um, I just keep putting in these pictures um, and these are with my level five students. OK, in, in one of the environments in Altspace. Um, OK, so uh, what next? Wow, um, that is such a good question. What are we going to do next? What I will say to you is this, um, everything's about to change. There is a new agenda, okay? And it's people like us that are stepping up and saying, we want to make a change. We want to develop, we want to do something different. We want to do something new because the old way of doing things just doesn't work anymore. Okay, chalk and talk, forget it. Walking past the same classroom year after year, hearing the same lecturer, deliver the same material in the same way every year. I'm sorry, we can't do that anymore. We can't, okay? We've got to break the mold. And, and now we have an opportunity with VR. Coronavirus, the positive side, if there is a positive side of coronavirus, is that coronavirus has given us an opportunity to make a massive change, okay? And we're able to do it quickly, okay? Um, and, and this is amazing because um, it, it is a new agenda. 
it's, it's going to take people like us to, to make a difference and to do something about it. Um, and, and sharing is caring, okay? This is not a competition. Uh, we're trying to democratize learning. Um, we, we all need to learn. We all need to develop together. We're all doing this as a team. We're all doing it together. Um, yes, we do need to eat. So there has to be some monetization somewhere. We have to be able to earn money to be able to survive. Um, but it is about the democratization of learning and, and doing this collectively, collegiately, um, for the goodness of, of learning, of education and of students. So there are some evolving VR technologies, okay? Uh, and I've put some examples there, Immerse.io. Um, there's a lot of online VR training, uh, things like forklift truck driving um, is in there as well, which is, which is really interesting. Um, so go and check that out. We have the Luminous Group uh, and the Luminous Group um, are there to, uh, they do a lot of fire training. Um, and uh, Daniel, you had a session in Engage the other day uh, where you were having a he heck of a lot of fun with fire um, and it was all to do with, with uh, immersive uh, fire training. So there are evolving VR technologies that are taking training to that next level uh, to make it more practical. Um, WebXR technologies, um, so Mozilla Hubs uh, was something that we were using um, at the International Summit. Uh, using WebXR technologies is a very, very interesting way of developing training even further. Uh, again, I've put links there so you can go and check it out. Uh, what about AR and, and wearable AR and MR and ER? Um, all of these terminologies we throw about, but you know, it's all about being able to take things out of the classroom into a real, real world environment and say, let's do something with this. Let's learn on the fly. I can be walking down the street and I can be learning a module in something. Crazy, but hey, do you know that's a possibility now? It's true, okay? So Apple Glass have just uh, had their details leaked online. I don't think they meant that to happen, but uh, Apple Glass could be coming out with the, the launch of the, the iPhone 12. Um, and it looks really quite interesting and the applications are going to be really quite interesting. Um, I have put a link there for medical applications. Uh, this is something that's being done now. Okay, um, so there's a medical application where they're using, I think it was HoloLens, so they're using um, AR and MR um, to use medical records within a safe coronavirus free environment whilst one of the clinicians was talking to the patient directly, the rest of the clinicians were in a different room. Um, and um, yeah, so, so the medical applications are really quite interesting and that's pushing forward more and more. And I, I think we're gonna see that an awful lot more. So I've put a link there that I think you'll find quite interesting. Uh, and I've just put there, Pokemon Go was, not, was, was, was just a taster, a taster of things to come and look at how addictive Pokemon Go was. Look at how many people picked up their phones and started wandering around um, looking for, for little Pokemons um, and, and the sales went through the roof. So just, just think about that and think about the skill sets you need to, to get involved in something like that. Um, and think about this, that global training and conferences will now be from your own home. Um, you can wear your favorite pajamas. Um, and sit there and go to a, there's a, a big conference coming up at the beginning of June, 1st to the 3rd of June of the VR ARA Global Summit. Um, and there's gonna, it's gonna be filled with employability opportunities, people there, you know, industry leaders. Um, so employment opportunities are changing. You need to keep step with that. You need to kind of recognize, you can't just go to a single place of work anymore and think, hey, that's okay. You can be at home developing new skill sets. You could be sitting there in your favorite pajamas. You could be engaging in training, okay? Um, you can evolve because the world is evolving around us, um, partly due to coronavirus, but actually mainly due to the, the ingenuity of VR, te VR technologies. Um, so I'll take questions in just a minute. Before we go to questions, I just want to show you, this is the resources slide I've put up for you. Um, so um, I've put some YouTube links there for some of the educators in VR Summit sessions. Uh, there's a student panel session that I ran uh, in the Students in VR conference, which is a separate conference. And it was a session I ran called uh, Life in Lockdown, a student perspective. And it was a student panel. And it was three of my students talking about how VR has helped them deal with lockdown. 
uh, and that's all of them are really interesting well worth checking out and uh, I've put on there some resources from unity as well um, because we are talking a little bit about games design um, demonstrating game design is difficult sharing a screen in VR at the moment is difficult because the weak link is always your network connection um, but you there is a way of managing it um, you can have it on a split screen where they're working live with you, even though it might not necessarily be in VR um, as such. Okay, so um, that's me. I've come to the end of my session. I hope you found it interesting and informative. And um, please, if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to, to take questions from you.